Thanks for clicking on Wayne.com for this week eight edition of Inside the Zone. Justin Kinney of Optimum Performance Sports joining us to talk some high school football. Man, uh, it's week eight. We've got our eye now towards the postseason, yeah. but we also have a few conference titles still to be decided, and then we have some conference titles that are more or less decided. Yeah. It's kind of a mixed bag as we head into this Week 8. What are you looking forward to here about Week 8? Uh, mixed bag, you know, NECC is still up for grabs, particularly that small division, and Columbia City, it, their biggest games coming up in Week 8 and Week 9 with Leo and Norwell. We like to think they're the team to give Norwell a dub or a, a battle, but they're going to have to face Leo first. Um, well, that, well, let's start off with the Northeast State yeah. because um, a lot of people are wondering who was going to be the team that would challenge Norwell. And as you alluded to, Columbia City looks like maybe the, the only team left, although I'm sure uh, Huntington North would say, hey. <laughs> Don't look past us. They're improved, I will say. They are. They, they can run the football. This of course, year. But they can't stop anybody. And so. Well, their numbers are up, and they are improved, and it's at Huntington North, and we love that new yeah. field. However, uh, a lot of people are circling uh, next week's game, Norwell, Columbia City. But Columbia City has to get by a Leo team that has sure. improved um, maybe just as much as anyone in the area from week one to week two to week three and on. It seems right. like they get better every time that we see them. So what is this Leo team going to do to present Columbia City with some, with some issues, knowing that, as we've talked about, Columbia City's season is backloaded with the, the powerhouse teams in the yeah. Northeast State? I think we discounted Leo after three weeks of the season because of two losses, and, uh, but that one win that was in there, and Angola at Angola looks better and better with each passing week. Mm -hmm. And their two losses are to teams that are undefeated with Kokomo and Norwell. So Leo's continually got better. I think the players have found that groove with the new coaching staff. And the new coaching staff with Coach Dorfler has found the groove with what works with those kids. And that's stuff you can't figure out until you start playing football games, right? So those adjustments that that program has been able to make from the first three weeks of the season to now – is exceptional, and it's going to be the biggest challenge for Columbia City in the NE8 up to now. That was kind of my next question, is what does Columbia City need to do to make sure I, – I know Brett Fox is going to have him focused game to game, yeah. but to make sure that, as is natural, a 14 to 18-year-old is looking forward to sure. maybe playing Norwell. How do you make sure you're ready for Leo? What do you do to be ready for Leo? You need to prepare for what Leo does best, which is when we've seen it, running the football – and then attacking over the top when they can. And that defense has been very good. So when we look at Colton Piper in particular at quarterback is protecting the football. And he's done a phenomenal job so far through the first seven weeks of the season. But the best defenses that he is going to face all year in the regular season come up in the next two weeks. And how does he protect the football? How does he distribute the football to guys in space to make plays? And if Columbia City can continue to run the football the way that we have seen. Justice Gorey, the last two weeks, has really come on strong. If they can continue to do that and move the chains on the ground, they got a great shot this weekend. Yeah, that was my next pet point. As <laughs> Justice Gorey has now become a, a staple on Friday nights when it comes to the highlights. I know James Getz and, and Josh Arntz were guys that we knew uh, could carry the football and help that offense move the ball up the football field. But it seems like they've even, you know, some teams when you go along in the season, they start uh, their, their offense gets smaller yeah. and the fact that they say, okay, we got our playmakers, let's just get them the football. It seems like Columbia City has branched out yeah, more and they've got to branch more, out. more options and more players as they continue to branch out. There. Yeah, you mentioned a couple of them when you got Arts and you got Gorey and, and Getz and just a bunch of guys that can carry the rock. And with that offense, with the misdirection, you need multiple guys that can do that. And they're really running it well. You know, Colton Piper's done a great job in terms of commanding this offense. That was a question going into the year. Lose Greg Bolt, not just with the stats that Greg could put up, but also the leadership and running the offense. And Colton has done a phenomenal job of that. So when we look at this matchup, I think it comes down to a lot of both two teams that are really feeling the flow and really rolling right now. And which one is going to get a win? And for Columbia City, when we look at it, if they can get a victory here, sets up a huge game week nine. Let's talk about huge games in week eight because our highlight zone game of the week is a classic powerhouse matchup between Snyder and Dwenger. Snyder comes in six and one recently. The IFCA poll just came number out Number one, today. baby. Number one in 5A. Bishop Dwenger comes in number uh, eight, number eight in 5A. 5A. Yep. So you got a top 10 matchup. Normally, in years past, this game in one way, shape, or form helps decide the SEC yeah. championship, especially because it always comes late in the season. Uh, not necessarily the case this year. But a big game because this is a matchup we could see 
-hmm. sectional semifinals, sectional finals. Right. Who knows in a couple of weeks as the draw is set for this coming Sunday um, uh, as far as the IHSAA goes. And if we look at it last year, this weekend matchup, Snyder wins it by double digits. We head into the postseason. We think we're going to see the very same thing when they matched up in the sectional final. And Bishop Dwenger beats him by 22 points in the sectional championship game. So we're putting a lot of stock into what happens this week, but – even as evidence last week, who knows what happens to this game will dictate what happens in the playoffs. But for Snyder, they've continued to roll through since that loss to Carroll in dominant fashion, both sides of the football. It's a team that's very balanced offensively and defensively. When you talk, you know, every Friday on the highlight zone and you're talking about the familiar faces and familiar guys around the area, Snyder it seems to be a different dude every week, right? So when we look at, you know, DeJore Johnson now has come on strong at the running back spot. Uriah Buchanan has come on strong at the running back spot. Luke Hoppert isn't turning the ball over, which is very key. And this defense is not allowing anybody to really get things going on, on offense. And that's, to me, the key to this one is can Bishop Dwinger find some consistency offensively? And they were able to find just enough against Lures to get a win. And, and it was good to go on the road and get that dub. But you're going to have to raise that level offensively if you're going to be able to keep up with Snyder. We mentioned how Columbia City's offense seems to be branching out with more players. Yep. I feel the same way about Snyder because yep. at the beginning of the year we said, okay, they can throw it, but it's really Hopper to Juarez, right? Yeah. And yet we've seen Lee and we've seen some of the other guys, Ferks, step yeah. up, especially in the red zone. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned the running back. We knew Langston Level coming into the season mm -hmm. was going to be one of the guys running the football, but Buchanan has really come on the last few weeks. I mean, just how dangerous is this offense? Snyder's defense is always going to be solid, going to do what they do. Yeah. But this offense now, they can throw it with multiple guys. They can run it with multiple guys. I mean, it's, it's, it's got to be a nightmare to prepare for, yeah. I would think. Yeah, and it's one of the more unassuming teams we have in the entire area, which is, is emblematic of, of just how they're coached and, and, and how down-to-earth they are. We see every weekend people talking, and it's not just kids and coaches, but you know their fans and on social media and, and how good we are. Snyder's just gone about their business, right? You just nary hear a peep out of Snyder, and here they are the number one team in Class 5A per the coaches. So it's a very business-like approach for this team. And you can guarantee that Kurt Tipman and a lot of those kids remember the last time they played Bishop Dwinger last year when their season ended. They want to prove a point on Friday night to get a win and also set them up for success in the postseason. For Dwinger, what's really the key? I mean, I imagine it is putting up enough points offensively yeah. because you talk about, you know, Braxton Burmis has done a nice job. The more he plays, you can tell the more comfortable he gets right. in that offense. And they've done some creative things to get the ball in the hands of C.J. Davis, yeah. whether it's Wildcat, whether it's yeah. uh, just a variety of different ways of getting him the football, which is it's never a bad thing. Right. And don't overthink it, right? Just yeah. get your playmakers the ball in space. And they've been running a lot of screens with C.J. Davis. And as you mentioned, the Wildcat, which we saw against Bishop Lures and even Carter Minnix the same way. And it's a, it's a testament to what Bishop Dwanger was able to do last week because those two combined for about 75 total yards in that game against Bishop Lures. And they still were able to win it and being able to run the football. And Tobias Tipman had a good night. Mm -hmm. But for Bishop Dwanger coming up against Snyder, I think the onus is going to be put on Braxton Burmas. I don't see... Bishop DeWanger able to run with the football as effectively as they have been in recent weeks. And I think that is going to be the key for Bishop DeWanger. Braxton Burmas, can he make some plays vertically? The ACAC is all but wrapped up. And uh, yeah. I don't want to go over it too much. Bluffton at Adams Central, Southern Wells at Heritage, Woodland at South Adams this week. But I do want to talk a bit about Woodland at South Adams. Yeah. Because Woodland faced uh, Culver Academy uh, last week, got a win, especially thanks to a couple of two-point conversions, 16-14. Yep. How good are you feeling if you're this Woodland team going down to South Adams, knowing that you know, they've already lost this season to Heritage? Maybe it's our turn, uh, our turn as well. Uh, Woodland wraps up the regular season with South Adams and Adams Central, so good luck with that. But being able to go to Burn and have a good performance would be really, really helpful. We're getting into that zone now, the final two weeks where – Opportunities are limited in terms of improving between now and the playoffs. So the onus of playing good football, and I think when you, when you talk to Mike Smith and Woodland, they'd love to win this weekend, but if they can go down to burn and have a good showing, that's going to pay dividends once the playoffs start. I just love the win against Culver Academy. I love it when one of our teams beats somebody from right? the other area, and maybe you didn't necessarily see it coming. 16-14, to 14, a victory for Woodland. Mike Smith, tip of the cap yes. to the Warriors out there at Etzler Field. Uh, in the NECC, Championships not decided quite yet from a mathematical standpoint, Correct. but we've got Eastside at Central Noble for the small division title, uh, an Angola at Garrett 
as the Hornets look to clinch the big division title. They've already got wins over West Noble and Fairfield. Uh, Fairfield obviously has fallen on hard times. Yeah. Injury is a part of that. Um, but at the beginning of the season, did we see these? This, this is basically, you kind of saw that East Side was probably the team yeah. to beat, but uh, Angola's been a bit of a nice surprise for Andy Thomas and company. They have good bounce back year for Angola, at least through the regular season. They've had some challengers in that big division, but they've handled all of them. And when you look at the small division then, and Central Noble is a team that, I cannot still figure out in a week. Like you mm -hmm. feel like you have an identity now, and I still, once I feel good about Central Noble, something happens. Once I feel bad about Central Noble, something happens. So who knows what Cougars team shows up this weekend to face off Eastside, but at the very least, they have an opportunity that with a win, they can capture that division. From a purely football fan standpoint, last week's loss by Central Noble to Churubusco, 42 to nothing at their place, was disappointing because yeah. it didn't set up a lot of excitement for this week's game. Whether right. they won or lost, you wanted them to see Busco play well and make this feel like at least a true championship game. And coming in, uh, while Central Noble has played well at times this season, I mean, it took a little juice out of right. them for this coming Friday. Especially for us when we're just craving these, yes. these conference championship games de facto. Yeah. That's why we're all internally rooting for Columbia City this weekend. Yeah. Not that, we, that we're fans of Columbia City over Leo, it's just it sets up a mammoth showdown next week. We are looking for a true championship yes. game. We thought we might get that with Eastside and Central Noble this week, and we could have it with Columbia City yeah. and Norwell next week, but we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, final question. You mentioned that uh, now teams, as they're eyeing the playoffs, they have few opportunities to improve, get better, and work some things out, especially if you don't have a bye week like some of these you know, right. smaller school teams. So what are you looking forward to here in week eight uh, that you're really looking to see happen on Friday night? I think you're looking at momentum. Which teams can start really putting together some good, complete performances and getting wins because you want to take that into Week 10 and beyond. Every coach says it. We want to be playing our best football in Week 10. It's cliche, but it's true. And now with Sunday looming and the draw coming, you cannot avoid the discussion now with the playoffs. You could say, well, we got plenty of time between now and then. It is coming less than two weeks, a little over two weeks away now, so – you better get ready. You better start playing your best football. It's like Game of Thrones. Winter is coming. <laughs> uh, we are going to have it all covered for you this Friday on the Highlight Zone. Justin and I will break it down next Monday on Inside the Zone. But for Week 8, I'm Glenn. He's Justin. And we'll see you next Monday on Wayne.com.